Hi there, and welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Corey. I am here with the the uh, the brain, the the creator, the designer. I'd say I'm uh, hurting all the brains. Hurting together. all the brains. Got yeah. it. So Scott created the Windows Virtual Desktop platform on Azure, That's and right. this just went live. Excuse me. Preview. Preview in March. In March. 21st. How is it going so far? Well, we got a lot of positive reaction to the announcement in March about the service, and uh, to date, we have about forty-eight hundred folks. Forty-eight hundred. Holy. Yeah, it's Jesus. been a great reception to it. Um, we see about fifty new uh, deployments daily yeah. on it right That's now. That's awesome. So it's ramping. And you just way. announced for, so Citrix, big partnership with Citrix here. Yeah, we announced that when we annou initially announced the service back in September at Ignite. We announced that we had a partnership with Citrix, and, and then, then we had a partnership with. We did. So just in Dell World a couple of weeks ago, we announced that we also now partnered with VMware. So wow. both Citrix and VMware uh, can be value-added partners on top of the WBD platform, bringing their protocols and all of their innovation and tools to help people better manage. That's um, awesome. Really so, complex deployments. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. How rude of me. Continue. You were done. No, that's good. We'll, no. we'll get back to We'll get back that. to it. So yeah. I was going to ask you, <laughs> tell us a little bit about, I mean, I think maybe for people who don't know, what, what this what this new acronym is. Tell us a little bit about what uh, Windows Virtual Desktop actually is and how customers can use it. Yeah, absolutely. So if uh, you're familiar with any type of desktop virtualization solutions, uh, it's been quite common that people are now starting to move some of their workloads up into the cloud and leveraging most traditionally app and desktop hosting. Um, and in the past, those have been restricted to server-based computing, where you take a Windows server and you install a desktop experience pack on it and, and maybe share it out to a number of users. Or the other path was you'd, you'd go down a Windows client-based model, traditionally called VDI. Right. right. Now with the cloud, we're introducing a brand new scenario with Azure specifically, where you can enable a Windows 10 multi-user scenario. Wow. So this is like a no compromise experience. When you have that difficult decision, do I want to provide a full rich Windows experience right. with VDI, right. or do I want to get the, the flexibility and, and lower costs so of the sharing? Agile, paz -y sort of experience of sharing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah. the platform itself is all PaaS based now. So in the past, if you wanted to build a deployment in the cloud, you'd have to go set up, you know, install a server on, on a VM and then still manage and patch all the server. Not very cloudy, is no, it? No, no, yeah, no, no. So WVD is based. I mean, it's cloudy here. It's, well, we're in Seattle, so that's it's a little bit. Good. It's a little bit. Can you see the clouds? No, you don't need to show. Yeah. Go on. Though. Yeah. So yeah, WVD is is all a PaaS based service, and we continue to add new um, Azure services where you can leverage more and more PaaS. Like we're integrating in with Azure Files now, so there's no need to stand up file servers in the traditional way. Got it. And we provide this flexibility of full app and desktop promoting using a full. Windows 10 experience, but right. we also support those traditional server-based workloads. Right. So, so if you want to just simply lift and shift your existing awesome. server-based workload to the cloud, we can support those. So it ends up being, I mean, sort of your, your no compromise. It's like the best of both worlds, is what you're telling me. It's sort exactly. of like you've got that that PaaS integration, that sort of PaaS experience if you want to go sort of full bore on, on sort of that no management aspect. But if you still have a bunch of these legacy applications that just have to run in that client environment, you can also support those. That's right. So yeah, we've done a bunch of work across you know, the organizations, uh, including Office and Windows, to really improve the experience. So we're leaning into that you know, Office running in a virtualized environment. Right. Where in the past, we kind of left it to customers' own devices to go figure out how to make it work. That's right, even though it was all Microsoft stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, fine. And customers really expected that, you know, I bought these two products from Microsoft, they should really right. work well together. Of course. So we spent the last couple of years really working closely with the Office team and we made a ton of innovations to improve the experience. Right, and, and they're all near each other because they're all gonna be running in the same data centers, right? right? There's yeah, a yeah. huge benefit there in terms of running your workloads in Azure, That's where awesome. all the, you know, the office services are being hosted yeah, as well. This is so what that means, near each other. Yes, close. That's the universal and, and integrated. picture. We also announced an acquisition of a, of a technology provider um, about November, December of this year that we acquired a company called FS Logic. And they bring a lot of innovation in terms of making the office uh, cache data kind of migrate with the user profile. Very cool. Yeah, in a traditional virtualization deployment, there's usually pools of machines, and you don't necessarily get assigned to the same machine That's each right. time. And so the so data is not there for those. But so it's take your first usage is super slow. Typically, That's something right. like like Outlook, right? That's right. Outlook and now Teams and things that, that tend to work best with a cache of user data. Now that stuff just mounts in instantly. Awesome. And it's also unlocked OneDrive support. So yes. now I can support OneDrive on, on these that, tools and machines very as well. Cool. Yeah, so exciting. that's awesome. I mean, it seems like a really, really cool, exciting service. 
Um, you know, one of the things that, um, at least my experiences with it, has been um, the sort of create getting started experience, right? Um, uh, maybe leaves a little bit to be desired, right? And so I hear, I, I hear rumors, rumors have, have told me that there is a new experience on the way. Yeah, we gave a little sneak peek of a new fully integrated Azure portal experience awesome. in March. And, yeah. and we've actually made some progress since then. And we continue to get feedback from customers about some of the challenges they're having moving between ARM templates and PowerShell and, and then the Azure Marketplace sure. that we have now. So we're working on unifying all that into a single management service. Good. Now, is there any way that we could show people what that would look like? You know what, Corey? It just so happens I've got it ready right here. So this uh, we've got a laptop right here. I didn't I didn't even notice. <laughs> well, maybe it's, we should go to the demo. It's very spelt. It happens to be right here. So here, it, very spelt, very yeah. nice usage. <laughs> so actually, here I'm in um, uh, our trial. You can uh, tell it's the, the orange. Yeah, the, the orange, orange bar, bar is like the yeah. yeah is like the internal secret That's secret right. website. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but you'll notice here in the blade here we've got a Windows Virtual Desktop. Uh, icon. So right here. Look at that with I the now, nice little logo. Yeah, very cool. Uh, so from this this new uh, management tool, I can actually build out my very first host pool, and that's effectively all you need to do. So if you want to build out, you know, a WBD deployment, I simply just come into here. I can go to host pools, and you can see we've got a ton of test host pools here already. <laughs> I can see you're playing. But with if this, I wanted yes. to create a new host pool, and this could be you know hosting apps or desktops, it can be this new Windows 10 multi user, yep. server based, or even VDI. I answer some of the same basic questions that we have in our mar marketplace tool today, like where do I want to deploy it? And who's yeah. the admin that's responsible yeah. for managing this? Right. And then because we're built on top of the Azure platform here, going into the, the VM oh, management cool. tools, much richer experience now exactly to get with this. Exactly the network, exactly the VMs, the that's public right. IPs, et cetera. All and very everything cool. in the in the in the gallery is available to us here. So any VM size, anything that's available to oh me, my goodness, I can I choose. Realize. Wow. And we provide some tools here to make it really easy for you to uh, decide how many instances of VMs you need and what size to choose. So you can simply tell us you know, the type of workload you've got. So is this a heavy workload, light or medium, or you can go custom. So if I said it was a heavy workload, and I can just say how many users, about 100 users, and they're 19. Oh, 19, that's, a, <laughs> that that's would be definitely a big heavy, point. definitely heavy workload. But I will definitely see customers making choices in the thousands or tens of thousands. Yeah. In this case, I was to say, you know, five users per core in an eight core machine. So we're gonna need, what, 50, or uh, yeah, some, somewhere in that range. Uh, five we'll get someone else to do the math for yeah, us. Thank you. Fine. Yeah. Five for this. But yeah, so if I just hit go and enter the rest of the parameters here, it'd go out and build those VMs for me and, and automatically go. set the, the loading of those VMs to that size. That's awesome. Yeah, so really slick way. Super of just, simple. Yeah, if you go through the rest of this, you can see it, it also gives you an opportunity to set some of the parameters about this host pool. Sure. So you can say, am I using multi-mod? Uh, Do I want to allow redirection of COM ports, USB ports, right. and things like all that? All these are like options that you can, if you can turn on multi-mod and have that working, yeah. wow. And all this today, unfortunately, people have to go into our you know REST APIs or right, into right. the, Call path the, the PowerShell, PowerShell to go set these parameters. So nice, they're all surfaced right here. Oh and I can do this. this. Wow. Yeah, lots of settings. Gives you a lot and of flexibility. Bar, enable super pen. Like, there's a lot of cool things here. Wow. And you can do this after the fact. So I can go through and set all these now, but I can just, if I just wanted to get through this really quick, I could set some tags if I wanted. I could look at the total deployment. If I entered in the parameters, I'd just hit create Great. here. And away and you go. Goes. Yeah. And That's then I've created my first host pool. Wow. Yeah. And so when does when does everyone, are you not allowed to tell me when everyone I can't can give an this? exact date, but we're, we're working hard. We've made oh, a lot of progress it. since what we showed in March. So yeah, this is coming great along progress. Well. Very cool. The plan is to get this out in the hands of our customers in an early uh, preview mode as soon as it's, yeah, soonish. Soonish. Two more is things that is the official, work. that yeah. is the official name. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, hey, Scott, thank you so much. This has been fantastic. I think this is a super cool experience that you just walked through and a super cool service and I think we um, uh, probably have one more thing that we want to show people but maybe that's going to be the next show okay. so we will we'll pull that in for the next show but for this show if you have any questions any comments please let us know hashtag Azure TWC uh, and uh, that is stands for Azure Tuesdays with Corey and uh, that's me Corey and uh, we are here talking about Windows Virtual Desktop so thank you so much Thanks, thank Corey. you have a great Tuesday We Your may carrier. have to call the FAA on this Your one. Your carrier's gonna hunt you down. That's right, that's right. Hold we're, on, I'll we're, call. Oh, we're I'm all sorry. set. Oh, you're ready? Yes, yeah, so you okay, can hit so the record button on that one there. It's, time, it's, it's recording. We're live. Okay. Excuse me, I got, uh, excuse me, I've got a message on my, on my. <laughs>
<laughs> just get, we're just gonna need. I'm just. I just need to. You should be on airplane mode. Siri. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You ready? Yep. You ready? I'm ready. And so Scott, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna kick off and say, tell me a little bit about. It's gonna. Be, this is gonna be amazing. What is the name of the show again? <laughs> All right. You ready? Oh, and 